It is a pleasure to present to you today, and I would like to thank the organisers of the AI World Congress for inviting me to speak. My talk will cover the life sciences sector in the UK, a short introduction to the National Health Service, or NHS, how it works and the priorities for healthcare in the UK. I will also provide a brief description of the health innovation system in the UK, including support particularly aimed at digital health technology. And I'll finish with a couple of case studies and a quick recap of the route to market. So, UK is a prime location to identify innovation and to research, develop and evaluate products and services in the National Health Service. It's one of the world's best healthcare systems and a testbed for global market development. It has dedicated support infrastructure, national agencies which work closely together to improve the NHS innovation pipeline and adoption process, a significant commercial sector with connected clusters across the UK, and a very strong government commitment to innovation. A little bit more about the UK life sciences sector in general. It's the number one life sciences cluster in Europe with a turnover of 74 billion per annum, employing nearly a quarter of a million people. It's got the largest number of biotech products under development in Europe across preclinical and clinical studies, and is ranked first for life sciences research in G7 by citation impact. The UK's medtech sector employment ranks fourth in the world, and digital health is the largest segment within it. And the AI and tech sector in the UK is the biggest in Europe, worth over 148, uh, apologies, 184 billion per annum dedicated centres support product development, evaluation and manufacture, and that goes across small molecules, biologics, vaccines, advanced therapies, medtech, and indeed digital and AI technology. And there's a number of cost-effective locations across the UK to set up R&D manufacturing or sales offices. All the top 25 global biopharma companies and top 30 global medtech companies operate in the UK. And there are evidence generation opportunities in a diverse population level test bed of more than 67 million people. The NHS in the UK is made up of four sister organisations in the devolved nations of England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. All are guided by the same basic principles. The NHS is a comprehensive service available to all access is determined by clinical need and not the ability to pay. It aspires to the highest standards of excellence and professionalism, and the patient is at the heart of everything. The NHS works across operational boundaries, and it's committed to providing the best value for taxpayers' money, as well as being accountable to the public communities and patients it serves. 85% of the UK's population comes under NHS England, and the NHS accounts for about 80% of the total healthcare market. So who does what in the NHS? And I'm referring here particularly to the arrangements with NHS England, and obviously as simply as I can make it in the time allowed. The Department of Health and Social Care, DHSC, is the government's department responsible for funding the healthcare system via taxes. Most of the funding goes to NHS England, plus some core department costs and a variety of related organisations. In 2020-21, planned spending for DHSC in England was just over 212 billion sterling. NHS England then funds commissioning, specialised services and our general practitioners. Health and care services are regulated by the Care Quality Commission and NHS Improvement, while medicines and healthcare products are regulated by the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency, or MHRA. NHS commissioning is focused on ensuring the provision of effective healthcare to meet the needs of a given population. Some commissioning occurs at national level, so-called direct commissioning, with a great deal at local level through our clinical commissioning groups. The providers deliver the commission services, for example, the NHS Trust, which manage our hospitals, primary care, and also our general practitioners. 
general practitioners or GPs are the gateway to the NHS for everyone, except in the cases of accident and emergency. There are a number of agencies within the NHS, and here are the two which are very important regarding AI and digital healthcare. NHS Digital is the national provider of information data and IT systems for our commissioners, analysts and clinicians in health and social care in England. And its activity includes a number of statistical publications, specialised data services, project and programme management. And it also develops and assures national systems against the appropriate contractual safety and information standards. In 2019, NHSX was formed to bring together teams across the Department of Health and Social Care, NHS England and NHS Improvement to drive digital transformation and lead policy implementation and change. So what are the NHS's priorities? The NHS long-term plan was published at the beginning of 2019, looking forward for the next five to 10 years. And it highlighted the following areas, improving the quality of care and reducing inequality, a focus on the major diseases of our age, cancer, cardiovascular disease, respiratory disease, stroke and mental health. Mental health is clearly defined as equally important to and inextricably linked with physical health. Prevention, early diagnosis and improved management of long-term conditions is a major focus. More generally, there's a desire to improve efficiency by doing more for the same or less, to keep people out of hospital so that only those who will truly benefit actually stay in hospital with a move towards a lot more care at local level or in the home and improving the patient experience through the care pathway and that includes end of life. Technology and digitization of the NHS is seen as a major enabler for delivery against these priorities. The NHS wants the best products and services that are innovative, beneficial, well evidenced and improve efficiency, stroke save money from around the world. It can also help companies to develop, test and evaluate their product, technology or service to ensure it works well with the NHS. The application of AI and data-driven technology in the NHS is identified across numerous areas, including digital medicines and prescribing, telemedicine, patient engagement, self-care and well-being, diagnostics and decision support, and health and social care integration. The long-term plan outlined the drive to a fully digitised primary care service and patient-facing technology. This, of course, has come very much to the fore as we all face the challenges of COVID-19. It's interesting to note, for example, that by February 2021, 90% of all GP consultations were online, compared with 31% in April 2019. The Secretary of State for Health and Social Care, Matt Hancock, has indicated that GPs should carry out 45% of consultations remotely, even after the pandemic. This, this slide does contain a lot of information, but it aims to provide a snapshot of the huge strengths in our publicly funded innovation support infrastructure across our universities, the NHS and centres of excellence. Academic research collaboration and funding for R&D is available to innovative companies through UKRI. The catapults, also funded by UKRI, are dedicated to working with industry to progress promising technology to the marketplace. In the life sciences, we have catapults in cell and gene therapy, medicine discovery, which includes data and diagnostics, and advanced manufacturing. HDR UK is the Health Data Research uh, National Institute for Health Data Science. More of this in just a moment. The National Institute for Health Research, NIHR, supports an integrated clinical health research system from inception through late stage trials to adoption. I'd also like to highlight the academic health science networks at this point, which are funded by both the NHS and the UK's business department, 
across the 15 regions of England. They are there to help accelerate the adoption and uptake of beneficial in innovation into the NHS and support economic development. On the right hand side is the NHS, the purchaser of the vast majority of our health technology, plus the regulator, MHRA, and the National Institute of Health and Care Excellence, NICE. NICE, in essence, looks at the value for money for the NHS. It can make recommendations about what should and should not be used. It looks at all new medicines and a growing number of health technologies. Accelerated Access Collaborative brings many of these organisations together to ensure that all the appropriate levers and incentives can be applied to ensure the most beneficial game-changing technology can be delivered to patients at scale and as quickly as possible. I'll now go on with a little bit more detail on Health Tech Connect, which you can also see on this slide. Health Tech Connect is a single portal for our UK innovation support system. It's free to use and it gives any company or innovator who registers potential access to one or more of the organisations in the system. Registrations will also be seen by NICE and NHS Supply. There is also the possibility for promising technologies to enter the horizon scanning process, which may ultimately end with the Accelerated Access Collaborative. Here's a quick look at the information and support particularly dedicated to AI and data-driven health technology. The NHS Artificial Intelligence Laboratory is focused on the accelerated adoption of AI technologies, for example, the use of AI in cancer diagnosis. We have very detailed evidence frameworks and processes for health and care tools and the technology, plus standards for digital health technologies and a code of contact for data-driven health and care. There are evidence generation opportunities in our diverse population level test bed of more than 67 million people with national data sets, including those from primary care, hospital care, disease registries, biobank, and genomic data. The Alan Turing Institute is the National Institute for Data Science and Artificial Intelligence and includes in its work the challenge to revolutionise healthcare. There are eight HDR UK health data research hubs. These are collaborations between the NHS, academia, patients, charity and industry partners with the aim of maximising insight and innovation from the use of health data. Five of these hubs focus in the clinical areas of respiratory, cardiovascular, eye, gut and gut disease and cancer, while the other four support digital trials, real world evidence and clinical care. The five centres for the application of AI in digital pathology and imaging in the NHS combine NHS, academic and industry partners to improve early diagnosis of diseases including cancer, by a significant investment in large-scale genomics and imaging analysis. There are also 11 NHS academic centres focused on translational medicine and evidence generation for medtech, including digital health technologies, uh, and plus five digital health accelerators and two digital health incubators across the academic health science networks. Now for two case studies, which help to illustrate some of the opportunities that arise from working with the health innovation system. Firstly, a live call, which is supporting the early detection of atrial fibrillation in the NHS. This is a serious problem in the UK, affecting nearly 1.4 million people, many of whom don't realize they have the condition, but it dramatically increases the risk of stroke, often the most severe form with only a 15% survival rate. This challenge was taken up as a priority across our academic health science networks, and they focused on increasing the adoption of digital technologies to improve detection and management of AF to drastically reduce the 12 and a half thousand strokes attributable to AF per year. One so such solution was a live cause cardia AF detection device which records an ECG using smartphones or tablets in under a minute. The devices were evaluated in a variety of settings, supported by the NHS Innovation Accelerator, 
and the NHS Innovation Technology Programme paid for national rollout in primary care. The second example is Healthy IO. This technology provides screening support for people at risk from chronic kidney disease, often associated with diabetes, and helps to reduce the more than 11,500 cases of end-stage renal disease over five years that currently occur. It is used by the patient at home to measure albumin and urine using smartphone technology, and they can then share the results digitally with a clinician through existing electronic medical records. NICE produced a MedTech innovation briefing to raise awareness of the patient benefit and potential savings to the NHS of this technology following an NHS study indicating that at-risk diabetic, diabetics could be identified and managed to prevent progression to more complex and expensive treatments that would be required if the condition went unchecked. The company was also supported by both the NHS Innovation Accelerator and the Greater Manchester AHSN Digital Innovation Accelerator. More recently, the company received a funding award for AI in health and care to help develop the necessary evidence for large scale commissioning and deployment in the NHS. My penultimate slide gives a quick overview of the route to market for MedTech. So, as I've noted earlier, MHRA is the UK regulator for market authorization for healthcare products. NIHR supports clinical investigations and studies for regulatory authorities and health technology assessments. And NICE evaluates benefits to patients and value and affordability for the NHS although it doesn't look at all MedTech products. However, the MedTech mandate policy recently introduced provides a formal route to support the national reimbursement and commissioning of devices, diagnostics or digital products that meet key criteria. And NICE is committed to reviewing more device diagnostics and digital health technologies. All product and service innovators can benefit from the innovation pathway and accelerated access program potentially. And there is more information available in the two DIT flyers you can see on this slide. So finally, there are a number of ways in which the Department for International Trade can assist companies interested in partnering with the NHS or the wider UK health innovation system. Please note contact details of my colleague, Hijun Sun, if you would like further help. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.